How's it going everybody? January 19th and I decided to take a little walk today, get some fresh air, come out here to the mountain, get beside some cozy fire, and get into the book of Job. Why the book of Job? Isn't Exodus after Genesis? Uh, yes. And I think it would fit for a chronological order, but the people who put together this chronological Bible thought that perhaps, oh, I don't know, Job would be better. And I think the reason behind that is because Job is supposed to be written before Genesis was written. It's an ancient book. Um, so, like it's ancient, it's got to fit in there somewhere. <laughs> So anyway, here we go through the book of Job, starting now. So the book of Job really symbolizes a shift in wisdom thinking. Uh, traditional wisdom at the time would think you do wrong, bad things happen to you, right? Bad things happen to bad people. Uh, but what about when bad things happen to good people. What then? First thing we learn about Job is that he's a, from the land of Uz. That <laughs> look on the map where Uz is. Doesn't look like he's necessarily an Israelite. Hello. So many people, people could debate that, I guess. Oh, this is a beautiful sunset. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty. Yeah, so he's from the land of us, and uh, he's got a bunch of sons, a bunch of daughters, and a whole pile of property. And he's a pretty prominent man. In fact, what makes him more prominent is the fact that he fears God and shuns evil. So God really likes this guy. He's got a lot of faith. In fact, every morning it seems like he wakes up after his kids have been out partying and he sacrifices just in case they, you know, maybe curse God while they were drunk and he's just kind of pleading for mercy. He's an upstanding dude. Whew, there's my light. He's an upstanding guy. But one day, as the Bible says, the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord, which are the angels from what we see, Satan comes up there and, uh, and God says, what have you been doing? He says, I've been cruising around all the earth, you know, just doing my thing. And he says, have you considered my servant Job? Like, have you looked at him? Have you, you know, not a guy like him, is there? He's the man on earth. You know what I mean? Sean's evil. And uh, he says, well, <laughs> you put a hedge of protection around him and you blessed him like crazy, so why wouldn't he serve you? Well, he goes, okay, you want to like venture a wager? What do you think? You know, I bet you, I take that hedge away, he'll still remain faithful. Uh, so tell you what, Satan, you can have your way with him, just don't take his life, don't touch his person. So, little bugger, what does he do? Satan goes and just starts, like in one day, destroying his entire life. Took all of his cattle, took all of his family, minus his wife. I mean, Job is the story of the worst thing that could, you could just about imagine happen to you. The Sabians come, take up, you know, take all his donkeys, take all his cattle. Uh, then next, fire from God falls and then takes out some more livestock. And then the Chaldeans come and they take out some more. I mean, this guy had a lot of stuff, obviously. And then all of a sudden, the, this wind, this fierce wind kicks up, hits the four corners of the house his kids were dwelling in, and just flattens it. So here you go. Can Satan control armies? Yes. Can, can Satan even control the weather? Yes. Can Satan bring fire from heaven kind of thing? Like, you know, what could make it look like an act of God? Yes. Uh, yes to all those things. And that might be really surprising for some of you, but uh, this book gives incredible insight into how the enemy works. Uh, but also note this, that it wasn't because God said no. God said, go ahead. So unless God... I mean, if God has you protected, you're protected. But if God wants to lift it for some reason, according to his will, well, within his rights to do so, then he will do it and he'll give that control of his Satan. That's interesting. Look up eschatology and with regards to the kind of power that Satan holds uh, in the end times, yeah, God will lift his protection from his saints at one point. It's going to go crazy. 
yeah, anyway, side note. I'm gonna warm up by the fire, it's getting chilly. Chilly, chilly. Chilly out here, but it's still pretty nice, man. So what happens next? Well, Satan goes back to God. God's like, so, how'd he do? And he's going, well, pretty good, I guess. I mean, oh, one thing. This famous, this famous verse in the Bible that says, the Lord gives and takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord. And in the context of this guy losing everything he owns, including his children, whom he loved to death, he says this, and then he begins to worship. That blows your mind. It absolutely blows your mind. The Bible says, in all things, you didn't sin. Oh, it's freezing. Whew. A little bit of hot coals left, not much, but enough to get me warmed up for the trip home. What happens next? Lake, a lot of light now. Almost done. Oh, I've got to speed this up. Yeah, so Satan goes back to God, says, Have you considered my servant Job? Is not like him in all the earth. Righteous man shuns evil, you know, loves me and stuff. And Satan said, Well, you know what? He still has his health. You take his health away, I mean, who wouldn't curse you? So he says, Okay, you can touch his body, but you can't take his life. So, yeah, he strikes his body, okay? And he gets, like, <laughs> boils of pus, like blisters and everywhere. And, I mean, at this point, he's reduced to just a lying in a heap of ashes and who comes along to comfort him his wife and she basically says why don't you just curse God and die my goodness look at you <laughs> what is going on the next couple chapters because it's at uh, Job 1 2 3 and 4 so the next couple chapters <laughs> uh, deal with with Job 1 kind of responding to this and, and, and you know what? It's so honest and it's so raw. And what he basically says is, I wish I didn't even live. I wish I never was born. Cursed be the day I was born. May I never be spoken of. So on and so forth. It is probably the most depressing stuff you ever heard in the, in the Bible. Woo, losing light again. Yeah, I'm, I'm not joking. It's, it's pretty depressing. But then here comes the wisdom of the day. His friend, supposedly, quote unquote friend, comes by and he says, you know, he starts waxing eloquent about all kinds of stuff, but long and short of what he says is, Job, you've been a pretty awesome guy. You've counseled lots of guys in their trouble. Now I think it's time that you get counseled in your trouble because obviously, you know, you did something wrong to deserve all this. What's the Lord saying through all this? <laughs> the Lord's saying a lot, mainly to me. <laughs> Buddy, you don't have it that bad got your kids you got your health so far but even if I was to take it away here's a challenge would you still trust me love me and, and, and follow me and I could only pray that I had the grace to do what Job did it's a pretty amazing story hope you uh, stay tuned through the whole journey throughout Job it's gonna be kind of weird uh, you're gonna see some of the worst friends you could ever ask for <laughs> uh, but then you're gonna see at the end the triumph of this man's faith and God showing up again in incredible ways. Uh, Job is a really cool book. Please tune in again. Thanks for uh, showing up. Jesus loves you. I love you. And we will see you tomorrow. Peace. The water looks pretty this time of night, doesn't it? How pretty is this? Woo! Thing to do right now.